So in this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, data mismanagement and kind of the best principles for how we manage data. <clears throat> the material from this lecture is, is going to be derived largely from uh, this idea of the data life cycle, which comes out of the, the reading you were assigned from data one. So why should we adhere to best practices in general, but for best practices in data management in particular? Um, so one reason that best practices exist in general uh, is, is well described by this quote from Mark, often attributed to Mark Twain, uh, that good judgment is the result of experience and experience is the result of bad judgment. So one of the reasons that uh, best practices exist is to help us avoid making the mistakes of others and to, to learn from the, the experiences of others uh, so that we don't have to uh, learn by making those same mistakes ourselves uh, time and time again. And when it comes to data management, uh, those mistakes can be painful and, and remarkably common, whether it comes from uh, losing files completely when you know, servers get, go down or computers get corrupted or broken or stolen, or files get corrupted or, or mismanaged, or just the incredible amount of work that can be put into uh, doing data management uh, that can often be uh, alleviated and made far simpler if one adheres to best practices and starts the data management practice from the beginning rather than treating it as a post hoc thing you do after you've collected data. Another really important reason to adhere to best practices uh, that is particularly relevant uh, in the environmental sciences and environmental policy uh, is the need to be very open and transparent about what we're doing how we're doing it, and the fact that we are adhering to best practices. Uh, we would hate for, for any of our scientific research or policy work in the environmental sciences and policy realm uh, to come into question uh, because of questions about the validity of our data or the mismanagement of our data. Um, and you know, it just really behooves us uh, as a field to, to be aware that we are, are really under the microscope more than many other disciplines. Uh, in a lot of the science and policy we do is, you know, can be contentious, so it's important to really uh, be in the open and, and adhere to best practices. So data management needs to start with planning, and this plan needs to occur before any data is ever collected. I mean, across this data life cycle, we're going to start in general from the perspective of, of data planning and data collection, move through the, the stages of data management and data cleaning and data preservation and then end with the perspective of the data user's perspective. So from the data collection perspective, uh, before we do any collection of any data, we need to know clearly what is the data that will be generated, uh, exactly what we're planning on measuring. We can't you know, change protocols on the fly and, and that includes protocols for how data is entered and stored. We need to know where the data will be stored. Um, you know, physically and, and virtually, and how it'll be backed up, uh, how we're going to handle versions, uh, what's the, the backup plan, what's the versioning plan, uh, how are, you know, are we using any sort of version control tools to maintain versions, uh, how often we are backing up, um, how will the data be organized, and that includes both within files in terms of rows and columns and units, uh, and also how files are named and then how files are organized in larger directories and how those directories are named and, and you know what the uh, documentation is going to be in those areas that explain that organization. How will the data be documented? Kind of what I just talked about. Um, and how will the data be released and where will it be released? So from the beginning you need to think be thinking about uh, where does this data get end up in the end? Is it going to be you know, on a government server? Is it going to be on a public research archive? You know, is it going to exist in industry? You know, where is this data um, and, and who is responsible for it and how is it going to be maintained? And that last point is, is a critical one. Uh, who's going to be in charge? You know, a great plan is, is kind of useless if, if no one feels they are responsible for each step of the plan. So you need to know who's, uh, who's kind of in charge of the different stages of data management. Uh, so this 
uh, field notebook represents the, the antithesis of, of good data management. And I'll say this is uh, one where I'm guilty. This is my uh, field notebook from some pilot work I did in Australia uh, many years ago. And, and this really is an example of how not to manage data. You know, I have data from uh, four different plots here um, with no real identifiers to track down where those plots were, how to match them up with something else. Within each plot, uh, you know, data is, are not in clearly in columns. I've actually got uh, at least uh, three or four different types of data munged together. So I have data on saplings, data on seedlings, data on vegetative cover, uh, data on coarse woody debris. Um, I have little pictures describing, and these are these are little sketches of, of forest plots. These are forest inventory plots uh, from Australia. I have a, a lot of species codes here that aren't defined. I have uh, units that are sometimes defined and sometimes not. I have, you know, uh, arbitrary symbols like what is little d versus big D. Um, and not clear where the protocols are that match up to all this. This is kind of uh, uh, how not to do data management. So when properly planned, the collection of data is well thought out and it usually begins starting with clear templates for any data collection, whether those are, are in field notebooks or pre-printed sheets or whether they're in an entirely born digital uh, format um, in terms of say, uh, tallies on a, a tablet, or whether these are, are data that is, are collected uh, purely digitally in some instrument or data logger. So you need to have you know, a clear definition of what the structure of the data is gonna be before you start collecting it. Uh, and that includes uh, defining any parameters and abbreviations. So any abbreviations, any codes that are used need to be well-defined ahead of time and not made up on the fly. Um, Codes for missing data are particularly important. So if you have, you know, you should never have an empty row of data in a data table, because then it's ambiguous as to why that value is empty. Did no one get there? Uh, did they get there and they couldn't collect the data? Um, you know, what exactly happened? Because um, you can't just turn missing data into zeros and interpret them as data, because that'll lead to very biased estimates. And without knowing why data was missing, that can actually lead to pretty substantial impacts on uh, data analysis and, and statistics, often much bigger impacts than many people realize. Uh, another important principle is, is the importance of autonomizing data. And that means that each column should really only contain one piece of information rather than munging multiple pieces of information together. Uh, one of the classic examples of but autonomized data is, is addresses. So you wouldn't want, say, just a, a column in a spreadsheet for addresses. You want to break that up into uh, the street, the city, the state, the zip code, the country. Uh, and that way, uh, you know, first, that makes your uh, data checking and data cleaning much easier because, you know, for example, with, with zip codes, there's only so many formats they can take on, and it's easy to, to write code to check whether these are valid, same with you know, state codes, uh, you know, uh, country codes, you know, uh, city names, town names, you know, all, all these sorts of information are, are much easier to check when they're broken up uh, rather than all munched together. And it's always very easy, you know, if you need to uh, come up with a composite address for you know, a label or something like that, to put those fields together with code. Um, the other reason is it also makes it a lot easier to search and sort data and, and to subset data if you have autonomized it. So like if, you, if you've just put addresses in and you want to find all the data for Massachusetts, you know, it's really hard to figure out just from you know, free text which, states are, which data comes from a particular state or a particular city or zip code. Uh, meaningful headers. You know, files always need to have headers and those uh, headers need to have meaningful variable names. You just can't call this, you know, X and Y and Z and assume that you'll still remember 20 years from now what X, Y, and Z actually were. The other thing that's really important is the, to commit to preserving the raw data and not to modify that. So whenever you do any quality control or data checking or any data manipulation for analysis, 
that you always do that with derived copies of the data, preferably doing that with code rather than by hand, because it's both more efficient and more reproducible to be able to do your data management by, by code. Um, but you, know, you, you never want to, to corrupt that original data source. And it's, it's remarkably easy for someone to go in and think that they're gonna be cleaning up a, a data source and suddenly they've sorted, you know, sorted the data where they you know, sorted columns one through three, but not four, five, and six. And, and now you, know, you save it and you have no ability to figure out what the original data was. You know, uh, these thing, things are remarkably easy to corrupt uh, your raw data or to just make you know, what seem to be correct changes and then later information shows that you know, the corrections you made uh, are themselves questionable or, or you know, better practices come, you know, become developed for those sorts of things. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you, you want to make sure your, your files have descriptive file names. Uh, you know, and things, you know, one thing I find particularly useful is to put you know, full dates um, in ISO standard in file names, and so this you know, year, month, day, which also makes it easier to, to sort. Um, yeah, so, so those are the initial stages of, of data management, starting from planning through collection. In the next video, we're going to talk about data, uh, data management, uh, preservation, and archiving. Oops.